Good morning. Good morning. Chilly morning. Y'all having a good day so far? Sorry, we're a little slow moving this yeah. morning, so it's probably coming out a little bit later, but. Yeah, it's, I didn't think we were supposed to have clouds today, but. I think around one o'clock it's supposed to get sunny. Clear up a little yeah, bit. And I need it to, because y'all, we have been hitting it so hard on the YouTube studio cabin build and the sawmill, because you know, we're milling as we go, kind of. And just trying to make decisions with the mill, but, or I'm sorry, with the cabin. But yeah, we, we've, we're pretty tired, but it's all good because it's still a beautiful day. Yeah, and it's, it's a good tired. I mean, we're. Yeah, it's a rewarding tired. We're, we're feeling it, but it's kind of that working off that winter sluggish not that we ever really slowed down but yeah during that worst cold we did yeah you know, i did we we weren't able to work you know as long because obviously you know now the days are getting longer and that kind of stuff and and it's so nice it, it is it's wonderful to be able to work longer throughout the day and we know that there's just going to be more time to do that and for two of us that basically survive off the sun uh that really drives our mood and ambition for the day is uh but we've we got a lot accomplished yesterday mm -hmm. we did and super excited about even getting that much done um, which leads us into the next step. There's a little bit more prep for mm -hmm. that, for what we did yesterday and kind of finishing and tying that up. Uh, and then it's the next step. I know. And, it's exciting. And it only goes up from there, guys. Just yeah. All the way to the, however tall we build the walls. And no matter how our mornings are starting, it, we can't help but just be cheerful and jolly. When we go get to play with the baby goats. <laughs> they, they are the cutest little things. And they're they're still getting used to their legs, which is, you know, it's always awesome watching a young, newborn, small animal, uh, you know, develop in its abilities to, you know, use its legs. And I mean, it reminds you of like when your kids were growing up and they finally like, oh, they figured out how to roll over, and then they mm -hmm. figured out how to crawl, and then walk, and then you're like, wait a minute, go back to that crawling, Because they like keep start up. prancing around and then lose their balance a little bit, and but they're, they're slowly warming up. Um, they don't run away from me or anything. They don't willfully let me pick them up, but I pick them up anyway. And But once they're in my arms, they are so snuggly. They'll lay their heads against my chest and nuzzle me. It's just, oh. They're just the cutest things. We can't wait for the next ones to be born. We don't have a date. We don't know when. Um, but yeah, the goats are doing amazing. The mamas, they're starting to warm up just a little bit. Uh, but still not freely given love. But I'll win them over, I hope. Yeah, and we knew it was going to be a process to get them... I don't know, rehumanized Acclimated. or acclimated, socialized. socialized. There we mm -hmm. go. Um, it, because they they started out being very socialized, so it's not an uncommon feature. But then we're new people too. Yeah. You know, and so they got new people, a new environment. And Maya is just all about them. She just wants to love on them. And the mamas, it's so funny because Maya will stick her snout, you know, right through the the fencing, trying to like you know, help the babies. Cause she whimpers anytime that we mess with any babies here on the homestead. Cause she's such a big mama. And, uh, the, the one go Ellie Mae, she'll sit there and she'll snort at him or snort at Maya, you know, just kind of like earthquake back off, back off. And it's so funny. Cause then Maya gets her feelings hurt yeah. and she just wants to love on the babies too. And, uh, then we also were able to check on the baby bunnies that were born and it looks like we have seven very healthy, very beautifully patterned baby bunnies also. Um, the teenagers, they're having a blast in their new, in their new environment. Uh, they are running all over the place. I, what? <laughs> oh, the other day I, I was out there and we were... We're still developing, but I think we settled. That's kind of some big news. We settled oh, on the layout of the homestead. Um, well, this part. 
Well, right. Like, the parts that are important, like, you know, my shop. Yeah. Um, but, I, so I was over by the, the grow-out cage, and, oh, they were like NASCAR. Just all eight of them in a line, running a circle around the entire cage, like, chasing one another. And, you know, normally you'll see a couple of them run in or something like that. But, no, it was all eight of them just yeah. going, like, for laps and laps and laps. And They're, they're loving it. They're loving their new and, and if you noticed in the video, it ended up having the top is, is longer than the bottom. So there's a ledge. And, they oh, love that ledge. Yeah, that's their favorite spot. Yeah. They sun themselves there. They hang out there. They poop there. And, yeah. Yeah. And the bed is getting nice and filled with poo, which then, oh, so should we tell them? I mean, yeah, we all can. of them first. Okay, so, oh, that's my daddy. He's wanting to call, but I'll call him right back because today's his birthday. Uh, so happy birthday, daddy. And um, I feel bad, but I'll answer him mm -hmm. in a minute. And so, yeah, so we did do some talking about the location of where we wanted things. And as much as we were trying to avoid this amount of work, it's the only smart thing to do. So as soon as my starts are done in the greenhouse, the greenhouse will be coming down. Uh, I was hoping to use it as a trellis system uh, throughout the summer. We we're gonna take the plastic off and trellis everything. And uh, that's probably not going to happen now. <sighs> My dad. <laughs> he says, like, why aren't you answering? Um, so we're actually going to be removing the cattle panel greenhouse and um, removing all the interior flower beds. So if you were here with us last summer, you know that I utilized every square inch I could of the area for a garden. Uh, and, and we needed to make these decisions because uh, as I start moving things out of the greenhouse, I don't want to plant them or put them somewhere that's going to be detrimental to us progressing forward in the shop build. Because once the YouTube studio is up, we're hitting it hard on the shop. So we are going to be tearing down the old foundation that was there. We have thought every long, hard way of what to do with the basement section. Do we keep the basement section? Do we build on top of it? Do, you know, we've run every possible scenario and then some. Yeah, and the hard decision with that is, and I know, you know, as we start tearing it down, obviously we'll video it and you guys will see all of the grout lines are mm -hmm. cracked or chipped out or anything. Not even there. And so, you know, our initial thought was like, well, hey, somebody built it, but then they didn't fill it. So we'll run rebar down the walls and we'll fill it. We'll have a pumper truck come and we'll just fill it. But with those cracks, whatever we put in it is going to run out. Maybe not all of it, but a big majority of it will. And it's going to be a waste and it's going to... And there's one basement wall, like literally if you touch it, it sways. Yeah. And, and, and it's just yeah. the amount of time, effort, and work that it would take to basically redo it. Next to tearing the walls down to restack them, you know, which we wouldn't necessarily have to do that much. But we'd have to go through by hand or with a hand grinder or whatever and chisel out all of those grout lines and then re-grout everything just to be able to come in. And it's just... It's an eyesore anyways. And it is. we I hate it. Yeah, like and we know you can cover up the blocks. Like it guys, this has been a, a year long discussion. So yeah. it's not it's not a an easily decided We don't like to waste things and if yeah. there's some way that we can preserve something then we will. But in this sense, it's just gotta come out. Yeah. And so with us taking it completely out, we're gonna go ahead and we'll stage a whole lot of the blocks. Mm -hmm. You know, out of the way projects. on the a property because they're there. I mean, and, and block isn't super expensive, you know, unless you're buying it in a big bulk and then that's, but you know, per block, they're not really that expensive. Uh, but why pay for them if we already have them? Mm -hmm. So we're going to pull out what we think will be enough for us in future projects. You know, we, 
we're always building a, a, a shelter, a shed, a cabin, a, some sort of a structure that, Something. you know, if it's safe for the animals, you know, we could easily put it on just a couple cinder blocks. Um, and that way, you know, especially with us using non-treated, you know, fresh sawmill lumber, you, you don't want it directly on the ground. Mm. And so we could easily put something like that up on some blocks or, you know, anything, honestly, it's just, yeah. but we don't need that entire foundations worth. So yeah. we're working on a plan of getting rid of the other block. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't know. Part of the idea was to crush it, like knock it over and crush it up. But how well would it crush? And would it settle yeah. after we've laid the foundation for the shop? Because the shop is going to basically encompass almost all of that footprint that the current mm -hmm. foundation is on. Yeah. And it's going to have it close to the house here. It's, it's going to really centralize an anchor, you know, everything that we've got going. Um, but also allow because the the second part of the whole dilemma was the garden yeah if we put the shop there which where is where the garden that? was then what do we do with the garden and and the greenhouse and right else. because they yeah. need to be in spaces and I mean we're we're clearing land as we go as needed uh, because we don't want it to be you know we don't want to end up with five acres of land up here that doesn't have one tree on it right and, and we've been very methodic in our choosing uh of what stays and what goes like we have little islands of trees throughout the property that make you know might block one area from being viewed and we want that um but the only logistical space with full sun that would allow me to do that is actually where the first harbor freight shed and the nugget are sitting in the well house and that cluster island there of those trees because it's got a real tall big beautiful tree i really really wanted to keep that island of trees but we've walked everything that we can every direction we've tossed every scenario i'm not a hundred percent sold on that be in my garden space because it does make it smaller um but unless something changes that's gonna have to be where it is with that being said boy do we got some work to do y'all because we have to move the harbor freight shed which means we have to move everything in it um we gotta take down that big tree mm -hmm. the well house clearly can't go anywhere but i can work with that within the the beautification of my garden uh and that'll allow me to have you know water right there the bunnies will have to also be relocated which we've got an idea for that as well so we literally spent what two days ago we spent a couple hours yeah several hours just and it wasn't our first conversation about it we have probably weekly conversations. Yeah, about but it. not now is the time where we have to Make because, like she said, it's once we start planting in the lick tubs for the garden, and and they are movable, but they're a lot of the crops like the tomato plants. We can move them until it's time to trellis them, right? Because once they start growing tall enough to trellis, that movement in the tractor, even as gentle as I try to be you take the risk of that plant snapping off and then you lose an entire plant. And, yeah. you know, we we don't want to have to try to maneuver at that level. Um, but so we're just trying to think ahead. Yeah. Think ahead and figure it out because... It's a lot of brain power, y'all. There's, there's a lot of things, and I know I've said it a bunch already, but there's a lot of things that go into developing your own land. Like... It looks great, and when you're watching everybody do it, you know, on YouTube or TV or whatever, it's like, oh, that's a perfect plan, or maybe I would change it this way. And you way. see the whole thing happen in 20 minutes. Yeah. And, movie magic. And yeah. then you yeah. you get to do it yourself, and there's a lot of factors that you don't think about. And with us very much trying to, you know, age in place on our property yeah. is we don't, you know, think about today, think about tomorrow you know, what worked for you yesterday, but honestly, it's a 10 year plan thought of, okay, in 10 years, 
what is this going to look yeah. like and how convenient you know is this location of this structure or a garden area or whatever is that still going to be feasible right. um and then making a flow you know the other part of why we're trying to keep everything so close um to this specific footprint where we're at because yes we have 17 acres but it doesn't do me any good to go plant a garden on the backside where you know we have limited access right now or um, you know even a couple acres this way past jake's cabin you know we thought about putting it up there but are we going to want to haul hay are we going to want to haul feed are we going to want to do all of those things well and with the garden stuff it's trying to keep everything like you obviously you want your greenhouse close to where you're going to do your actual plant garden so you're not hauling you know trays of seeds or pots of plants or anything yeah. and then in the end part of it is well you have to harvest all of all of that you know food that you're producing and when you harvest it well then you've got to have a place to clean it you've got to have a place to to process it so it has to be close to the summer kitchen which and, is right here right and so the outdoor kitchen is going to be attached you know we're going to build an extra deck out of from the existing deck on the tiny house mm -hmm. make that much larger and that's where the outdoor kitchen and then a, a seating area and all that kind of stuff is going to be so, so it all it all needs to be you know what is that what feng shui it all needs to work in feng shui i don't know it needs to be functionable <laughs> right isn't that the feng shui where everything just oh. if you're talking about your you know auras and feelings and I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it needs to work for us. And in our defense, when we first put up the greenhouse, if y'all haven't gone back and watched some of those earlier videos, um, when we arrived at the property, it was, uh, what, late November last year? Well, that's, yeah, it was like November is when we closed. Yeah. But we didn't get here till February, well, January. Well, yeah. January, February, but you know, we got onto the property after we closed. And so it was well into winter time. And, you know, I just, I had that pressing feeling in my heart and soul, get, get food in the ground, get food in the ground, get food in the ground. And I'm glad that I did. And I'm glad that I listened to that thought. So it was, we need a greenhouse. We need it now. What's our easiest way to construct one and where's our easiest, most makes sense place to put it? And in that moment, that was the space. And it's worked out wonderfully. Uh, but we got to move it. And not only that, but we did some talking too. And we want a more permanent structure for my greenhouse. So the cattle panels are going to be turned back into cattle panels, saved for probably hogs or probably our next animals that we add and we're actually going to frame myself a new greenhouse and um, make it a little bit more functional something that we're not having to replace the plastic with so lots of projects y'all um, the new greenhouse probably will end up being a winter project just for the simple fact that from this point on it doesn't get any less busy <laughs> right it doesn't get but we we also put the the cattle panel greenhouse up knowing that it was going to be easy disassembly and mm -hmm. move because the likelihood of that being the permanent location of the was greenhouse yeah. was pretty slim and we knew that right and so it's it's not we're not upset mm -hmm. at all about it like we knew oh, i'll cry I'll probably cry when it comes down just uh, oh, yeah. yeah but it, a much better one is going to go up in its yeah. place and in a better location and even that one i mean guys that's the one thing that we try to keep in mind with everything is locations aren't necessarily fully permanent all the time i mean certain objects yes like obviously when the shop goes up there's no way i'm tearing that down and move it anywhere um you know this house is not going anywhere you know like we may change locations mm -hmm. um on the property and build us a new you know log cabin home but this would always stay here and either be you know guest quarters or it's something that either jake or jenna or if one of the other kids decides they're moving mm -hmm. down 
Um, you know, this is a ready to go place for them to move into yeah. and we just make arrangements or we leave it as guests, you know, and uh, work we something out that it? way. I like, mean, we don't know. That's the problem when you have two people like us <laughs> that are perpetual dreamers. And not only that, but when you were, and I know we've talked about it before, but like when you take off that constraint of limitations, it, anything's possible. Anything's possible for us to build. Anything's possible for us to do. And when you take those limitations of, oh, you can't do that off, this is what happens. <laughs> yeah. Because everything's possible if it's, it, but it does take hard work. So we have a lot of work to do to make that happen. But right now we're going to try to stay focused on getting the YouTube studio done. Uh, come I've Saturday. Banned, I've banned her from Marketplace until the studio is done. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, come Saturday's video, I plan on being able to show y'all. I, I didn't have much for a video yesterday, and but it is what it is. Uh, but Saturday's video, you guys are going to see a huge transformation in the YouTube Studio cabin. We're, it's, it's mm, yay. But speaking of which, I need to crack that whip because it's waiting out there for us to go get to work. It's pretty permanent now. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. No, but it yes. also, yeah. We, we've got weather rolling in. Um, Tomorrow. And so there are a few things that need to get buttoned up on it. Mm -hmm. And so. I honestly thought about waking up this morning and seeing if you wanted to go thrifting. And then I looked at the weather and I'm like, crap a doodle. It's supposed to no. rain tomorrow. So well, tomorrow the other, would be a better day to go thrifting. The other thing you talk about thrifting was we did gain another project. Uh, it's mm -hmm. more of a, a Jake and I project. Oh. And um, so at some point today, <laughs> I need to take care of that because uh, Jake's been driving our car. Because his is broke down. Um, yeah. Because his has been broke down and it's it's uh, his car issue is enough that I, I didn't want to tear into it because it's one that we would probably have to tear the engine apart and do that kind of stuff. And I'm like, it, it, for all the right reasons, I'm not doing that till I have a shop up. And so in the meantime, we always drive my truck. And so her I car- I last time I drove. <laughs> her car has been available and Jake needed to work. So we just said, hey, you drive the car until you, know, you find something or we find a way to fix yours. And so he found a truck and it needs some work, um, but nothing that we can't handle. And it is work almost kind of like on the car, but the, the great thing, I mean, it's an S10. So being a GM product, it's a lot easier to yeah. work on. And I'm a lot more familiar than a newer Hyundai, Hyundai or whatever or, it is. is it? Yeah, I think yeah, it's a it's Hyundai. Like, um, but, you know, and there's no room to work underneath the hood of that car. And it's just like, yeah. But right now it's on Mickey and Keith's car hauler. Yeah. Uh, so from building with Mickey and Keith, we borrowed their car hauler for them to go get that. So we do need to get that off. You and Jake probably need to get that done today. Yeah. So Jake's, that Jake's off today. Um, I think today and tomorrow. So I think we're going to try to film that too, to put it on the channel. I mean, I know it's not building gardening or something, but it's part of homesteading, you know, it's. You know, fixing your own stuff and, yeah. and not we're calling out for every little all thing. the 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 self-sufficiency you know conversation that's part of it is <laughs> speaking of that that reminds me of when we did have our breakdown over on the west side um now mind you we broke down on the side of a four lane highway area um three and a half hours away from home right and somebody had actually made a comment on that video, oh, I thought y'all were homesteaders. I thought y'all fixed your own stuff, you know, and really beat us up in the comments because we weren't doing the repairs ourselves. And it's like, we're like three and a half hours away. We have not all the tools to do it with, but yeah, we, we do try to do our own things. We do try to fix our own things. If we can't, we recognize that we can't. Well, there's a time and a situation yeah. and, and, that was one of them. You know, it was just, it, it's funny to see those comments. And I, you know, I, I don't take them as a hard comment anyways. Um, because it is. I mean, when you, you brag or comment, I guess it's not really bragging, you know, that I'm a mechanic. And, you know, I've done a lot of wrenching my whole life. And when I, and it hurts to have to pay somebody else to do the work for you. But 
time and situation. So you all understand that, but we're yeah. going to get on to work, yes. guys. We're yes. going to get some get something done around here. And enough lollygagging, lady. you just been sitting around all morning. Oh, y'all know that ain't true. You know that ain't true. You had a great Does breakfast. See? It, mine's broken, y'all. I can't I got it. laundry going. Speaking of which, it's doing that thing again. Yeah. But, all right, y'all. I'm going to get this uploaded. So Have I a will, great day, guys. Yes. Have a blessed day, guys. Bye.